Hello and welcome. In this video, I will walk you through building an interactive investment portfolio analysis dashboard like this. So let's see what we got. We have an asset input. So currently I have a portfolio out of Apple, Microsoft and Google. And my analysis starts taking data from the past one year into consideration, but you can pick whatever time horizon you're interested in. And what we see is that the portfolio outperformed the benchmark, so the S&P 500. What we also see is that this outperformance comes with a higher risk. So as you see, the portfolio risk measured in standard deviation is higher than the benchmark risk. So benchmark is the S&P 500. As a perk, I also added the portfolio composition as a pie chart below. So a 3S portfolio has weights of one third each. Let's play a bit around here to familiarize ourselves adding some stocks. So let's take EG Coca-Cola. You see the portfolio risk is dropping where we are still more risky than the benchmark. Now let's add, let's take Kimberly Clark. Now we are getting closer to the benchmark risk and we are still outperforming the S&P 500. Finally, let's add McDonald's. And now you see our portfolio even has lower risk than the benchmark, right? Still outperforming the benchmark. As a side note, you can also take the sharp ratio as a better comparison, but I think you got the idea. Furthermore, having more assets, we got another weight composition, as you see. Now, this whole dashboard is taking equal weights into account. What would be more dedicated and maybe even more interesting is to build this dashboard value-weighted, taking into account when you bought and what quantity you bought, so that you can actually mirror your own real stock portfolio. I will cover this dependent on the feedback on this video. So if you're interested in that, please like, comment and share. Before we are getting started, thanks to Coursera for sponsoring this video. Coursera offers world-class, affordable, flexible and job-relevant online learning. In specific, I want to share the Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate, which will have you job ready within six months. As you see, it has a 4.8 out of 5 star rating and over 1.4 million people are already enrolled. Speaking of numbers, people working in this field earn a median salary of about 89,000 US dollar. You do not need prior experience and you are able to learn self-paced. Skills you will learn in specific are key analytical skills such as data cleaning and analysis and high in demand tools such as R programming, Tableau, spreadsheets and SQL. With that, aid your self-development or even choose a new career path for 2023. To boost your CV or your LinkedIn profile, after finishing, you're getting a Google Professional Certificate, which you then can share. So sign up to enroll for a seven-day free trial of this program now with my link, which I will post below. Thanks again, Coursera, for sponsoring this video. All right, let's get started. Important note here, I won't cover the mathematical detailed background of the portfolio risk calculation as I have a whole dedicated course on this, which I will link below and highly recommend to check out. So you need some libraries, Pandas, Y Finance, Matplotlib, NumPy and Streamlit. And here I'm giving the dashboard a title and then take the assets as text input and initially just pass Apple, Microsoft and Google. For the date, I'm using a date input and pass a default value. Then I'm pulling data for the provided assets and the provided starting date, ending up with a price data frame like this. Next, I'm doing the return calculation to get daily relative changes instead of absolute prices. And then I'm accumulating those returns. The mathematical background of this will also be linked in the video description. In the end, I'm calculating a mean return of the accumulated returns, ending up with the portfolio accumulated returns. And that's simply weighting the return components. 
So I'm just averaging all rows in the cumulative return data frame. So let me show you what exactly I'm doing. So we have the cumulative returns here. So this is the cumulative return for Apple, Google and Microsoft. And now as I have an equal weighted portfolio, I'm just weighting those returns. So I'm taking one third of this plus one third of this plus one third of this. So I can just take the mean on this axis and get the daily portfolio cumulative return. And this is what I'm doing here. So I'm taking the mean on axis one. And with that, I have more my portfolio cumulative return. All right. Next, I'm doing the benchmark comparison, pulling data for the S&P 500. Again, do the relative change calculation, so return calculation, and once again, cumulate those returns. So how do you interpret this number here? Just as an example, the S&P 500 was rising by 4.4% since roughly one year. Next, portfolio risk calculation. First, I'm creating a weights vector. And this is quite straightforward. I'm creating a NumPy array only containing ones with the length of the covariance matrix. The covariance matrix length is always just the number of assets you are considering. So in our case, three. And then I'm simply dividing that, so an array of ones with the length of the covariance matrix, so an array of three ones, I'm dividing that by the length of the covariance matrix. So we got one divided by three as each element of that array. You see it here, one third, one third, one third. So with four assets, I would get an array of four ones here, divided by four. So I would get an array of 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and so on. So that is also working with whatever number of assets you are providing. Then I'm calculating the portfolio risk by taking the dot product of the covariance matrix with the weights vector, and then again, the dot product of the weights vector with the result. That would result in getting the portfolio variance. Taking the square root ends up with the portfolio standard deviation. I've explained in a mathematical way how exactly this is working in a resource which I will link in the video description. Next we got the plotting part. So I have another header here. So I'm just putting together the benchmark development with the portfolio development. So I have it in one data frame, right? Reason behind that is simply easier plotting with Streamlit. So as you see, I'm concatenating those two data frames, give it column names, ending up with a data frame like this. So I have it two time series here right beside each other. So I can simply pass that so together into the line chart function. Quite convenient. Finally, I'm printing out the portfolio risk. So again, a header here, then portfolio risk and then the benchmark risk. So that is simply the standard deviation of the benchmark returns. And I have my portfolio risk and benchmark risk shown here. And then finally for the composition, I'm just setting up a subplot, passing a black background color, and then create a pie chart passing my weights vector containing the weights of the assets and the columns of my price data frame which are the asset names as the labels. And then I format the percentages here and give the text a white color and finally pass it to Streamlit. So let's clean up the script, what we actually need for Streamlit. So we need all of that. We need this one here. We don't need this one. We don't need this one. We don't need this one. 
this one we don't need we don't need we don't need we don't need and that should be it so let's download that as a python file so raw python file downloads we got it here so let's open up a terminal streamlet run and then pass the python file here and then this one is opening up so you see you're getting the dashboard shown in the beginning let's add some assets here works like a charm yes there you have it so thank you very much for watching and i'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos bye bye